Happy Easter, Depot Church. He is risen. He is risen. I don't know how you're watching this, whether you're by yourself or with a lot of people, or, well, definitely not 10 or more, um, but maybe with your family, or maybe you're alone. Wherever you're at, whatever you're doing, here's what I want you to do. I want you to say with me out loud, He is risen. Will you do that? He is risen. Happy Easter. Happy Resurrection Sunday, Depot Church. He is indeed risen. Now, we're going to do that activity one more time. Wherever you're at, whomever you're with, um, I want you to say He is risen. But this time, I want you to shout it. I want you to shout, He is risen. Can you do that for me? One, two, three. Three. He is risen. It is Easter, and we are here to celebrate Resurrection Sunday. I want you to know this about today, Easter Sunday. Uh, it is no less sacred, no less holy, and no less real because we're not meeting together in person. Easter is no less real because you're uh, social distancing and you're staying at home. Easter is no less real or sacred or holy uh, because you're watching on a phone or on your TV or on a computer screen. He is still risen. It is Easter Sunday, Depot Church, Resurrection Sunday, and He is still risen. I'm going to read to you from Matthew 28, 1 through 10. Early on Sunday morning, as the new day was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary Oh, went out to visit the tomb. Suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled aside the stone, and sat on it. His face shone like lightning, and his clothing was white as snow. The guards shook with fear when they saw him, and they fell into a deep faint. Then the angel spoke to the women, Don't be afraid, he said. I know you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. He isn't here. He is risen from the dead, just as he said would happen. Come and see where his body was laying. And now, go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead, and he is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. Remember what I've told you. The women ran quickly from the tomb. They were frightened, but also filled with great joy. And they rushed to give the disciples uh, the angel's message. And as they went, Jesus met them, greeted them, and they ran to him. They grasped his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Don't be afraid. Go tell my brothers for Galilee, to leave for Galilee, and they will see me there. Let's pray together. Father God, I thank you for Easter Sunday. I thank you for Resurrection Sunday. I thank you for the life, the death, and the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ. I thank you for his uh, giving us freedom of sin, uh, and I thank you for giving his life so that uh, we may have eternal life with you. Lord, I thank you for those who are watching. Bless their lives. Bless our times together. Speak to us. We love you, and we give you the praise and the glory for the Easter Sunday that we celebrate. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So what is God teaching us? We've been asking that question a lot lately. I believe this Easter, God is teaching us to celebrate and worship from the heart. To get back to the heart of worship. Way back in the 1990s, early 90s, when contemporary Christian music was really taken off, uh, there was a um, song by Matt Redman called The Heart of Worship. And I've been thinking about that song a lot lately. Um, and these last four Sundays, this being the fifth Sunday that we haven't been able to meet together, has reminded me of the story that is behind this song. And so I read the article again this week about the story uh, of The Heart of Worship by Matt Redman. And I want to share that with you today. Redmond's congregation was struggling to find meaning in its uh, musical outpouring at the time. 
there was a dynamic that was missing. So the pastor did a pretty brave thing. And he recalls he decided to, to get rid of the sound system and a band for a season. And they gathered together with just voices. And his point for doing this was that they had lost their way in worship. And the way to get back to the heart of worship, to the heart, would be strip everything away. It reminded his church family to be producers in worship, not just consumers. The pastor asked, when you come through these doors on a Sunday, what are you bringing as an offering to God? Matt said that the question initially led to some embarrassing, quiet moments and silence moments, awkward silence. But pretty soon people uh, broke into a cappella uh, songs and heartfelt prayers, encountering God in a, in a fresh and a brand new way. Before long, they reintroduced uh, the musicians and the sound system, and they gained a new perspective that worship is all about Jesus. And He commands a response in the depths of our soul, no matter what the circumstance and setting. The heart of worship describes the song. The heart of worship describes what occurred in that church back then. And I think it accurately depicts what is going on in the church right now. This Easter Sunday, we are learning to get back to the heart of worship. And the verses go like this. When the music fades, all is stripped away, and I simply come, longing just to bring something that's of worth that will bless your heart. I'll bring you more than a song, for a song in itself is not what you have required. You must search much deeper within through the way things appear. You're looking into my heart. King of endless worth, no one could express how much you deserve. Though I'm weak and poor, all I have is yours every single breath. Now, I usually leave this up to Jesse, but it's Easter Sunday, and it's a weird time in the world, so let's get weird. I'm going to sing. The chorus goes like this. I'm coming back to the heart of worship and it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it. When it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. Bow ties and fancy hats have been replaced with comfy socks and pajama pants. Big community egg hunts like we've always had have been replaced with these small backyard hunts, immediate family only, six feet apart, no more than ten. Easter baskets brought to you by um, a bunny wearing a mask and some gloves, stocked by Amazon rather than going out to Walmart or Target. Meals around the once abandoned dinner table have returned instead of crowded restaurant. Much of how we celebrate Easter has changed this year, but what we are celebrating, the heart of what we are celebrating and who we are worshiping has not changed. The heart of worship is worshiping from the heart. Despite the circumstances that surround us, He is still risen and he's teaching us to get back to the heart of a lot of things in our lives but also back to the heart of worship on Easter Sunday he is still risen he is still risen and the same message that was delivered uh, to the world 2,000 years ago through the life death and resurrection of Jesus Christ is delivered to us right now 2020, in front of phones and computer screens uh, instead of stages and pulpits. Again, not about the delivery. It's about the deliverer. I said it's not about the delivery. It's about the deliverer. Last week we said that Christianity's cry during this season, during this crisis, during COVID-19, coronavirus, pandemic, stay at home, orders, social distancing, all this stuff that is new to us. 
We said that the theme is faith over fear. But as I was praying and preparing for Easter Sunday, this message, there's another word that kept uh, coming up in my spirit. And that word is deliverer and delivered. Jesus deliverer, Jesus delivered. The deliverer delivered on a promise. He's still risen, church, and we are still delivered. We are delivered from our sins because of the cross. And no matter how strong the chains, Jesus delivers freedom. And we are delivered from death because of the grave and the empty tomb. No matter how looming the fear of death, Jesus delivers life. He is risen. He has delivered life to us. He has delivered freedom to us. He is still risen. Worship is not canceled. Death is. The church is not empty. The tomb is. He is still risen. This is what they felt like when it happened. And today, it's how we should feel too. Because what it meant for them, it means for us.
in a few minutes, we're going to receive communion together. And I want you to do this. I want you to use what you have. Maybe it's orange juice and a cracker like I'm going to use. Maybe it's goldfish and uh, soda. Maybe it's grape juice and maybe you're lucky enough to have some grape juice. Uh, grape juice and a piece of bread. Or maybe it's uh, milk and cookies for the kids, right? So we're going to celebrate communion together. We're going to receive communion together. But I want you to remember that it's, a what, it's about what it represents, not what it is. So any of those things that you have around the house will do. And so I hope you got those ready ahead of time. I wanted to warn you on social media uh, before this aired that we were going to do this. But we're going to receive together communion. So make sure you have those ready, and that's coming up in just a minute. God, what are you teaching us this Easter? I, I believe that God is teaching us this Easter that a lot can change from day to day. I believe that God is teaching us this Easter that what we know and what we're doing one day may look entirely different the next day. A lot, of been, a lot of folks have been posting on their social media this picture, and I'm going to put it up on the screen. It says this, it says a lot can happen in seven days. Or maybe you've seen this one too. It is well reported that this is going to be a rough week across the globe. It was a rough week for Jesus. But just look at the outcome, at that outcome. Two, two days ago, on Good Friday, Jesus, God's Son, was dying on a cross, the most brutal form of execution known to man in history. And that's after being mocked and, and tortured. We call it Good Friday. What looks like disaster for God's Son is good for us. And then three days ago, a Maundy Thursday, Jesus was having the Passover meal with his disciples. And then seven days ago on Palm Sunday, Jesus and his disciples entered Jerusalem with all this fanfare. Uh, they were celebrated as they were going coming into uh, Jerusalem for Passover. And it's called the triumphal entry. The people waved palm branches that we talked about last week, and they shouted, Hosanna. A lot can happen in seven days. And those cheers from last Sunday, turned to jeers as they shouted crucify him on Good Friday. Passover is a celebration that Jesus and his disciples were going into Jerusalem to celebrate together. Passover celebrates Moses' uh, leading the Israelites out of slavery in Egypt and into the wilderness. It's called Passover because the final plague, if you remember from that story, um, led to Pharaoh's releasing of the Israelites. And that final plague was that all firstborn sons of Egypt would die. And in order for the firstborn sons of Is the Israelites not to die, to live, they were to prepare a special meal uh, of lamb and spread its blood on the door so the angel of death would pass over their home. This is what they have come to celebrate the Passover lamb. Jesus came to be the Passover lamb. Wyatt asked me if we celebrated Passover. This was after watching last Sunday's kids worship. I hope you're watching these uh, with your kids as well. It, they are really good and they're on our Kids Depot page each week on Wednesdays and Sundays. It was about Passover. And my answer to him was, well, kind of, when we celebrate communion, we celebrate the final once and for all Passover. The Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world once and for all. Pause a second. You hear that, Depot Church? It's a train. It doesn't happen a whole lot in Stanley as much as it used to. It's nice to hear the train coming through town on our Easter Sunday worship. Coming by the Depot, I bet. 
But my answer to him, do we celebrate Passover, was kind of, yes, when we celebrate communion, we are. We're celebrating the once and for all a sacrifice of the Lamb of God, Jesus. On Thursday night, uh, Jesus held his final gathering with his closest disciples, his closest followers, and at the gathering, they shared a meal together. And during the meal, an ordinance was created that we still practice today, communion. An ordinance of remembrance. For, dis for the disciples, they were remembering something that was going to occur, something that Jesus had alluded to and something that prophets of old, uh, the Old Testament, prophesied about in Jesus the Messiah. Let's hear this now. Matthew 26, 17 through 30. On the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Where do you want us to prepare the Passover meal for you? As you go into the city, he told them, you will see a certain man. Tell him the teacher says, My time has come, and I will eat the Passover meal with my disciples at your house. So the disciples did, did as Jesus told them and prepared the Passover meal there. When it was evening, Jesus sat down at the table with the twelve, while they were eating, he said, I tell you the truth, one of you will betray me. Greatly distressed, each one asked in turn, Am I the one, Lord? He replied, One of you who has just eaten from this bowl with me will betray me. For the Son of Man must die, as the Scriptures declared long ago. But how terrible it will be for the one who betrays him. It would be far better for the man if he had never been born. Judas, the one who betrayed him, also asked, Rabbi, am I the one? And Jesus told him, You have said it. As they were eating, Jesus took some bread and blessed it. Then he broke it in pieces, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this and eat it, for this is my body. And he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. He gave it to them and said, Each of you drink from it, for this is my blood, which confirms the covenant between God and his people. It is poured out as a sacrifice to forgive the sins of many. Mark my words. I will not drink wine again until the day I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Then they sang a hymn and went out to the Mount of Olives. Let's pray together. Father God, we thank you for communion. We thank you for the time that we remember the great sacrifice of your son Jesus on the cross for our sins. We thank you for the new covenant, the Lamb of God, the once and for all sacrifice for us. So God, may we as your people live in obedience and faithfulness over fear. May we live as a people that share the love of Jesus with others, take care of each other, and are kind. Father, may we represent you well. And we pray this in the great name of our Savior, Jesus. Amen. Amen. May it be so. Church, Easter Sunday 2020 is not going to be one that you want to forget. It's not going to be one that you're going to try to forget over the years. But it's going to be one that we'll always remember. And we're going to remember it because God taught us some things Easter 2020. He taught us about faith over fear. He taught us about the heart of worship. He taught us about Jesus Deliverer and Jesus Delivered. And He taught us that a lot can change from day to day. We're not together in person, but church, He is still risen. Now go and celebrate our risen Savior. 
Happy Easter Depot Church. He is still risen.